Hi, I'm Wayne the Boat Guy, and today we're going to be playing with my VHF radio. Let's talk all about how we're supposed to use this thing, because I had no idea how to use it. Well, as I've said before, I'm relatively new to boating, and uh, my boat has a VHF radio. And so last year, as I went out a few times or whatever, I, I heard something about, you know, that you use channel 16 and that you can call the Coast Guard on there, but I never really ventured far from home, always well within sight of land, usually only a couple of nautical miles away from home. And uh, quite honestly, I never really used it. Um, I turned on the weather channel on there a few times, I'll show you that. And um, I didn't really utilize it at all. So this winter, I started kind of digging into it to try to find out really, do I need a VHF radio? What is it used for? Uh, if I'm not going out to sea, is, is it, does it make sense to have one? And uh, I learned quite a bit about it and I'm gonna share that with you right now. So uh, first of all, make sure my power's on here. Let's switch on our radio. All right, now as you'll see, it says MMSI is not entered. Apparently one of the things you can do is you can sync up your VHF radio with a GPS. And I have a GPS depth finder or whatever, and I don't know, maybe it's because it's not on right now, but apparently you can use that to be able to hit this distress button right here. And that will identify your boat and identify your location. So in an event of emergency, if you have it hooked up with GPS, something happens, you can literally just hit that button or you can tell somebody else to hit that button. So in my mind, that's a really great feature right there because my passengers might not understand how to use this radio if something happens to me. Um, also, if I'm trying to give them commands because I'm taking care of something like the transom has fallen off the back of the boat and I'm trying to keep us from sinking, I might ask somebody else to call for help. Uh, by just hitting that distress button, that obviously is a very easy way to do that. Right now I have my radio tuned to uh, channel 16, but uh, let me just show you a couple of the cool things that you can do with this. And I've only just begun learning about it, and I've not actually even tried some of these things out. So we're gonna try them out together. First of all, here's my weather. Humidity was 44%. Winds northeast at 22 miles an hour, and the barometric pressure was 30.36 inches and steady. Now for some observations from the surrounding area. At the Inner Harbor, 64 degrees. At Annapolis, the temperature was 59. 59. Wind ceased at 16 miles an hour, gusting to 25. Wind northeast at 18 miles an hour. You get the general hour, idea. At any time you can get weather, and I don't know how often they update it, but there's the marine weather right there, uh, which is very handy because it tells you uh, wind height, or wind, uh, I believe it tells you wave height and things like that too, I, whenever I checked it last summer. So another interesting thing is what we're all supposed to do is we're supposed to monitor channel 16. Uh, whoops. Uh, let's see here. There we go. So what I did with mine is I had to hit the weather button again to get to channel 16. So we're supposed to monitor channel 16 at all times. Channel 16 is sort of the universal open band. So what you're supposed to do as a boater is you're supposed to keep your radio on on channel 16 at all times while you're out in the water whenever you're not talking to somebody on another channel or checking the weather. And this is because this is the universal channel that people use for communicating. Uh, so if there's a distress call, that's where they, they start off. And if you're nearby, it's your obligation to go and, and assist. Also, obviously, if somebody sees me in my red and white runabout and uh, they're in a sailboat and they're coming across and they don't think that I see them, they might call me on channel 16. Channel 16 is good to have it on, be monitoring at all times. There's not a lot of people out today, so we're not hearing any, any activity going on here, which is a shame. I'd love to be able to hear some activity. From some of the research I've done, apparently channel 16 can be very busy because sometimes people will have whole conversations on there chit-chatting back and forth. 
Another interesting channel is channel 13. Channel 13 is for bridge to bridge, which means the ship's bridge. Uh, so where the people are you know, the driving the ships. For ships that are in the channel, uh, in, the, in the harbor, in the bay, and I live right off the Chesapeake Bay. So this is where larger ships should be talking to each other. Um, I don't know if we're too far because apparently one of the things that I understand too is that channel 13 is a shorter range. So channel 16 goes a longer range and channel 13 is a shorter range. Don't know how that works, but I might only be able to hear any communication whenever they're within a mile or two of me, maybe less. Now also, if you notice with my radio, it actually shows what some of these channels do. And there's commercial ones, there's vessel to bridge. Um, vessel traffic. And commercial port operators, Coast Guard only. Ooh. Now, uh, one of the things I watched was a Coast Guard video where they talked about basically if you are hailing the Coast Guard, what they'll tell you is they'll, uh, if you hail them on channel 16 and you know, you do a distress call or mayday call, uh, they'll tell you to tune to channel 22A and that way they can continue the conversation with you. Also, some of these other higher channels, apparently you can use them for an automated radio check. So what some people do is when they do a radio check, they do it on channel 16. Well, if you think about it, if you're a boater and you're out all day long, or you do this as a job, like you're a fisherman, and you've got 27,000 recreational boaters who are doing a radio check uh, all day long, that could probably get pretty annoying. So one of the things that I looked up is it said that channel 24 to 28 are typically used for radio check. Now, the way some of these work is it's an automated radio check. So the idea is that you say radio check and then it calls you back with exactly what you said. And uh, we'll see what happens. Wayne, the boat guy doing a radio check. Wayne, the boat guy doing a radio check on channel 28. Wayne, the boat guy doing a radio check on channel 27. Radio check on channel 26. Doing a radio check on channel 25. On channel 24. Well, we still don't know whether or not this is actually transmitting. Annapolis Harbor Controls, YP708, channel 120. There's Annapolis Harbor Control or somebody's calling Annapolis Harbor Control on channel 12. So clearly if we're going to... Couldn't quite understand what they were saying. So they're probably pulling it down to Annapolis Harbor. One of the tips I saw in another video was that instead of doing a radio check, which could be annoying, if there happens to be traffic on channel 16 and they're just having a conversation or whatever, contribute something to the conversation and whenever they respond, ask if they heard you clearly. Commercial boat operators don't do a radio check. And I think they think it's funny that uh, those of us who go out every once in a while do a radio check. But if you haven't used your radio in six months, there's a possibility that it doesn't work, that it's not transmitting, that the microphone isn't working. As you saw from me trying to do a radio check, I wasn't getting any response, so I still don't know whether this works. So I was originally very skeptical about why I even needed a VHF radio. Uh, I thought to myself, it's only if you go out to sea uh, or you don't have a cell phone or something like that with you. But clearly just the distress feature alone, if you have that hooked up and being able to call for help when you need it, because you might need help very quickly and being able to call for help when you need it, uh, VHF radio is very useful. And as a boater, you should have channel 16 on and be monitoring that all the time whenever you're out boating. And I'm gonna to try to make sure I'm a much better boater this year than I was last year. 
Anyway, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please be sure to uh, like, comment, or subscribe below. If you subscribe, ring the bell, you'll get notifications whenever I put out new videos. I'm putting out videos pretty regularly nowadays as I'm getting my boat ready to go in the water for the season. But you, my little friend, we don't know what you're up to yet.